Hello, welcome to People Soft Channel. You are listening to Siva Koya, and today I want to share with you one of the oldest techniques used to troubleshoot People Soft issues, and that technique is two-tier tracing. In this episode, I will show you how to configure two-tier tracing, and if you stick around, I am going to introduce you to one of the newest flags added to the debug settings that will be very handy for you when you troubleshoot App Engine programs. All right, let's get started. Before I show you how to take two-tier trace, these are some of the advantages with it. Two-tier tracing is something we do from App Designer when we connect directly to database instead of through App Server, and that's why it's called two-tier. And the best part is the trace files get saved into your local machine. Sometimes it happens that you don't have access to the regular trace files. For example, files are not posted to reporting server. In this situation, two-tier tracing comes handy for you. And lastly, trace files grow big over time and this technique saves you some space. Now, let me show you how to do it. I logged into App Designer. In order to take two-tier trace, we need to navigate to Configuration Manager. We can do that from App Designer. I am selecting Go configuration. Now I will navigate to trace tab. This is where we set trace parameters. For this demonstration, I will select some of my favorite trace parameters. This is where the trace files get saved. By default, it's in the temp folder and this is the default name. If you want, you can change the location and even the file name. Now I will apply the changes and click OK. You have to remember this. After you are done with the trace settings in Configuration Manager, you need to log out of your App Designer and log back again because the changes take effect the next time you log in into App Designer. And this lesson I learned in a very hard way. I was pulling my hair why my trace settings are not working. And this was the reason. So let me do that. Let me log out of our App Designer and log back in. Now we are ready to test guys. Let's pick an App Engine program. You can pick any App Engine program. For this demonstration, I picked General Edit Process. I created this journal ahead of time. Let's pretend for a second there is some issue with journal validation process and we are troubleshooting it in two-tier mode. This is the run control page for our process. I have set all the parameters. Instead of running this process through process scheduler, we are going to run this process from App Designer with the trace that we set a few minutes back. All right, let's head to App Designer. Opening our App Engine program. I'm going to run it. Click on Run button. I will make sure I use the same run control ID that I configured a while back. The process ran successfully. As you can see here, a trace file was generated and I can take a look at the trace and it contains both SQL and people code trace. At this point, you might ask me, where is my AET file? Sure, we can generate AET file through two-tier mode. For that, we have to check a couple of boxes in the configuration manager. Let's go ahead and do that. I will again navigate to configuration manager from App Designer. Go configuration. Now I will navigate to trace tab. In order to generate AET trace, we need to select the flags step and SQL under App Engine Trace. While I am here, let me introduce you to one of the newest flags added in PeopleTools 8.57 that is very, very helpful for us, especially when we are troubleshooting a complex App Engine process. This is to track what kind of data gets inserted or updated into temporary tables. Very helpful, right? And that flag is temp table data. This flag is introduced in PeopleTools 8.57. Let me show you what kind of data gets inserted when we select this flag. I'll click apply. Okay. Always remember in order for the new change to take effect, you need to log out of App Designer and re-login again. I created one more journal for this test. My run control page is ready. Let me go ahead and run this process in two tier mode. Let me use the same run control. 
the process ran to success. You can see the regular trace file here. If you are looking for AET trace, you won't find it here. There is a folder called PS inside temp folder. Our AET trace is buried inside it. And this is where our AET file is located. The usual AET trace. Along with that, you will see a new file and this is for the temporary table data. Here you can see for each step, what kind of data existed before in the temporary table and after. In this case, it looks like it is inserting data for the first time. This is the data that gets inserted into the temp table. Look, here you can see what was the data before and after inserting data into temp table. Likewise, you can see here the data before and after the update statement. Sounds pretty cool, right? For more interesting troubleshooting techniques, don't forget to watch my videos listed in the description below. That's pretty much about it for today, guys. For more interesting content, don't forget to visit my channel. I look forward for your feedback. Based on it, I refine myself and try to come up with the content that adds value to your skill set. Through this video, if you learn at least one or two new points, I feel all my effort is well worth it. Hit that subscribe button if you want to follow my videos. Let's stay in touch. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, signing off, Siva Koya, your people's soft partner.